Hey YouTubers, it's me Lonnie Clark again. Here I am, 12 hours later. Uh, I'm going to do another reading today. I told you that I do it. I'm trying to, I'm making an effort to get through this oral history. It's quite an endeavor as it turns out. But uh, here we are again, and it's not numbered, so I can't give you the pages. But the title is Human Radiation Studies: Remembering the Early Years, Oral History of Dr. John W. W. Goffman. MD, PhD, conducted December 20th, 1994, by the United States Department of Energy Office of Human Radiation Experiments, June 1995. They actually have an Office of Human Radiation Experiments. And I wonder if they still have an office. I don't know. That would be an interesting thing for me to look into, although, I don't know. I hate to put myself on the exact radar of the government and call them. These people are murderous. Anyways, let's get back to this. Uh, let's see. We were talking about, I'll read you the last paragraph that I've read to you before so we can get kind of a brain up of where we were. X-rays were, there was a radiology department in the Mayo Clinic. They did diagnostic and therapeutic work. Now, in the very earliest years after Rotogen's discovery of the X-ray and Curie's discovery of radium, both got into medicine very quickly. Hmm. It looked promising, but it was not limited to the therapy of cancer with both X-ray and radium. That was only part of the story. Every disease you can think of, there is a paper. Let me just go through some of them. Gorley, all right. Goffman. <clears throat> There was a disorder for a couple of hundred years worried the hell out of people. The disorder is what we call SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Nobody knew what was causing SIDS. I have over there on the shelf in the library a 1914 issue of Guatheme's Anesthesia. The worry was that there were some kids that have an operation, tonsillectomy or something, and they would die when the anesthetic was given, or everything was going fine, and they would just die suddenly. Over Now, this is an interesting thing. Uh, at the turn of the last century, our scientists cared about our children. Hmm. Over a hundred years back from today, somebody thought this must be due to something with the thymus gland. It was a mysterious gland that no one knew what it did. We don't know too much today, but more than we knew then. This was, there was this idea that the large thymus might be the basis of a disease called status thymicomphithidigus. Woo! T-H-Y-M-I-C-O-L-Y-M. P-H-A-T-I-C-U-S. What status thycholymphaticus, I'm not going to say that again. I'll call it M-F-M. No, that doesn't work. T-M-F. No, because it's got a pH. It's an F sound. I guess I'll have to struggle with saying the word. Sorry about that. I get all caught up in these big... I mean, look how big this letter word is. Check out this word. You guys try to say that. Can you see that? that freaking, that's a combination of a bunch of words. And then they just decided to call it something. <clears throat> okay, whatever the status, whatever it was, did was, first of all, some of the children had trouble because of obstructed breathing. They were said to have a crow-like respiration and they died. Bothamy's book indicated that they were complaining about anesthesia. It was a very scary thing if you were a mother and had a baby that was having some respiratory difficulties and you heard about this thymus problem. You'd worry about it. In 1911, a man by the name of Sidney Lang, a physician, a radiologist, in a Cincinnati paper gave saying, uh, excuse me, in Cincinnati gave a paper 
saying that he had a lady bring in a child. She had two children before die of this sudden instant death syndrome. This child was getting blue and having trouble breathing, and he said, I irradiated a thymus gland. The child did fine. So I did that a second and a third time and a fourth. And then the kid dies. Watch this. The Lang work didn't cause too much change in the first few years. But then it got picked up. The answer to sudden infant death syndrome was to check the thymus with x-rays to see if it was enlarged. You can see the shadow. It's right underneath the breastbone. If there's any indication it's enlarged, the treatment was x-rays. Now, how much x-ray do you think they gave? They talk about tracers, you know, experiment tracers. You give somebody a fraction of a rad. They gave these kids two to four hundred rads. And I just said they cared about kids. It didn't start with the bomb. It started in 1911 when Sidney Lang gave that paper. And it became the rage. You, as a surgeon who had operated on a child without first checking whether he had an enlarged thymus, can face a malpractice unit. So there were just thousands of children tested. Wow. Maybe this is what's wrong with America, man. We're suffering the effects of nuclear pollution from 1911. Some people said, hey, look, why do we wait until these kids' tonsils are taken out? Why don't we do something better? Here's what they did. A man by the name of Sam Donaldson at Ann Arbor, Michigan, a professor of radiology, took consecutively 2,000, 2,000 babies born in the nursery and studied them when they were less than a week old to see if their thymus was enlarged. If their thymus was enlarged, he said, why wait until they get done with the troubled breathing? Let's give them x-rays right now. 2,000 infants were studied, and 5% of them who they said had an enlarged thyroid were treated with x-rays. They weren't to be outdone because Conti and Patton at the University of Pittsburgh constructed a series of 7,400 consecutive children with the exact same thing being done. Holy fuck. Almost 10,000 kids. So you're talking about a few human radi radiation experiments done in the 1940s when experiments that could take make your hair stand on end were already completed in the 20s. Not on a few, not on 18 with plutonium, but, but 2,000 children who were not even out of the nursery. The only thing you had to do to get treated with radiation was be born alive. They didn't treat you if you were born dead. If you were born alive, you got treated. Wow. Mosher of Massachusetts General Hospital. That was like the Mecca in medicine, and I've already talked to you about Letty at the Mayo Clinic, which in his which in his pretty hot stuff, and the Massachusetts General of the Mecca of Medicine. In 1995, Mosher talked about the kids that had no tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. Every one of those kids who came to Massachusetts. Uh, who came to Massachusetts General or the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary, Infirmary for possible surgery for their tonsils had their thymus studied. No operations were done if the thymus was enlarged. Then they had to get two to four hundred rats to their thymus. He reported that 5,000 children proudly announcing they hadn't had any of them under anesthesia. Wow. I wonder how long this goes on. Oh, man. I'm going to stop. I'm going to make this a short video mostly because I'm tired. I need to be up in the morning. 
Um, let me put my glasses on so my eyes don't wobble, wobble all around. There we go. Okay, now I can see you. So, um, thank you for listening to this um, reading, and I hope it's not as boring as it seems. I do make an effort to read it well, doing the best I can, and I hope you enjoyed And thank you. Obviously you do. It's number 10 or something like that. So uh, I think you agree with me. This is getting pretty meaty. 10,000 children treated with radiation at the turn of the century. In fact, every child got radiated. Wow. Put your courage feet on, ma'am. We are uncovering onions here. Peeling them back, eh? Wow. Ciao.